My name is Joe Sampson. I'm from Oakland, California, and I play safety for BYU. But not anymore. Sampson suspended. How will the loss of the senior safety affect the Cougars down the stretch? Turning time, the women's soccer team starts their postseason run tonight in Southfield against an in-state rival. And doubleheader, the men's and women's basketball teams tip off tonight in the Marriott Center. Find out how you can get the best seat in the house. I'm Sean Gordon. And I'm Taylor Lansford. Baby, it's cold outside, but it's about to warm up with the two. Song stuck in my head. It's a Thanks a tune. lot. Sorry. It, it is, it is. <laughs> and it's nice to have football back. A week off without BYU football, not fun at it all. It is nice, but you're going to see some changes on the field as BYU's nationally ranked defense has lost one of its playmakers. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall released a statement saying starter senior safety Joe Sampson and sophomore linebacker Zach Stout were suspended for an undisclosed violation of team rules and have withdrawn from school. Sampson was an integral part of the second Darian has recorded 33 tackles this season. Stout has been battling injuries for the past year and has only played in one game this season. I'm joined here with BYU TV Sports' Corey Aldis. Corey, what can we expect, or I'm sorry, what do we know about what happened with Well, him? so far, BYU likes to keep that information confidential, so not too much has come out. But Brian Logan, who is Joe Sampson's cousin, did speak with KSL last night, and he said that Joe Sampson was basically put in a negative situation that was out of his control. Although police did just come out with a report on the incident, they said that it occurred at 3 a.m. on November 1st at a local Mexican restaurant. But as of right now, no charges have been filed, but the police do say that the alleged assault did involve several BYU football players. It's so unfortunate. So with Stout and Samson gone, what's going to happen to our defense? Well, with Stout gone, it doesn't make too much of an impact only mm -hmm. because he's been injured for the past two years. But as far as Samson goes, we do lose a starter who's had 33 tackles on the year. And with Mike Haig, who is his backup already out for the year, it really hurts our depth. So no Samson, no Haig. So who's going to start at safety? It's going to be Craig Bills, the sophomore. He's already played in all nine games so far, so he's more than capable to step up and help out the defense. He's mainly played in just nickel situations, but since he probably will be the starter next year, this will be a great opportunity for him to pick up some starting experience. But we don't exactly know that Stout and Samson were involved for sure. As far as the police do say, th okay. that's correct. That's unfortunate. Thanks, Corey. And tomorrow night's the last home game for BYU football, and Idaho comes into town with a 1-8 and eight record. A win over the Vandals would make the Cougars bowl eligible for the eighth straight year. Idaho's a program in transition. The Vandals fired head coach Rob Akey in October, replacing him with offensive coordinator Jason Gesser. And the coaching change didn't seem to have much effect, though, last weekend as the Vandals were rolled by San Jose State 42-13. And then to make matters worse, starting quarterback Dominique Blackman was kicked off the team last week after failing a drug test. Idaho ranks in the bottom five in the nation on both sides of the ball. The Vandals are one-dimensional on offense, averaging just 82 yards per game on the ground. And then on the other side, they struggle to contain an air attack, giving up 300 passing yards. Look for BYU to move the ball effectively and then make it a long night for the Vandals on offense. Scheduling opponents for football isn't as easy as what m a lot of fans might think. CoogTube reporter Royce Hinton gives us an inside scoop on just what it takes to create that perfect indie schedule. With BYU having already played what many would say are their most challenging opponents, some fans are looking ahead to what's in store for the Cougars' future. After playing tough road games this year, Cougar fans and players alike learn just how difficult creating a diverse and complete schedule can be. Scheduling in and of itself when you're trying to do 12 games is pretty challenging from the standpoint of how all the pieces fit together. The opportunity for games is not as challenging as it is just trying to fit it all together. With BYU making announcements over the past week for future games with Cincinnati, Michigan, and Virginia, it would seem at least some of those puzzle pieces are finally being put together. My, really my philosophy once we've hit independence is, has changed. I'm 
pretty much willing to go anywhere and play anybody um, in front of the biggest crowds to improve our program. And improving against tough teams on the road isn't the only reason independence works for Broncos Cougars. I think it's a unique thing having ESPN as a partner because they are always brokering games and putting teams together and looking for matchups. And so having them as a partner really gives us some unique opportunities that we wouldn't have otherwise. BYU is playing in Hawaii next year, giving the Cougars a unique opportunity to play 13 games if they so choose. With just five of next year's contests scheduled at Lavelle Edwards Stadium so far, plan for BYU to make at least one more stop at home before next year's lineup is finalized. Be sure to keep an eye out for even more future scheduling announcements to see if the Cougars will come roaring to your hometown. Sean? Thanks, Royce. And switching gears a little bit, the West Coast Conference champion BYU women's soccer finished off the regular season in style, taking down Pepperdine 2-zip in Malibu. Early in the second half, Chloe Coulihan gave the Cougars the lead, and then BYU sealed the deal with six minutes left on a score from Carly Payne Holmo. It's BYU's 10th shutout and extends their unbeaten streak to 17 games. Tonight, the women's soccer team will play in the first round of the NCAA tournament. CoopTube reporter Sarah Burton is at Southfield. Sarah, can you describe that feeling that's in the locker room right now? Everyone is anxious and excited for the game to start as final preparations are underway here at Southfield. A very different feeling than it was a year ago when the NCAA passed over the Cougars for the NCAA tournament. On Monday, the BYU women's soccer team met at BYU Broadcasting to watch the NCAA Tournament Selection Show. We kind of felt like we deserved to have a number one seed, but, I mean, in the past it hasn't gone our way, and so we just were expecting the worst. Instead, the team got the best, a number one seed in the NCAA Tournament. What an honor it is to get a first seed in the first place, but we've worked so hard, I think we've earned it, and it's just exciting. The players could tell early on that their team had something special, something driving them to more success than in past seasons. That Penn State game, I think it was a special game for us, and we realized, you know, we can, if we can beat them, we can beat anyone. And we didn't just beat them, I mean, we killed them, so <laughs> it's exciting. The Cougars only saw defeat once this season, and it was a crushing blow, losing to in-state rival University of Utah by one goal. In the first round of the tournament, the Cougars will take on another in-state rival, Utah State University. The Cougars beat the Aggies once already this season, but it was only by one goal, and one victory doesn't guarantee another. Um, it'll be a tough game, but I think, you know, we all want this so bad, we're going to go out there and give it our all and play our best. BYU will kick off at Southfield against Utah State at 6 tonight. The Cougars hope home field advantage will maximize their confidence and propel them to the next round of the tournament. We're excited to be home and, and have that energy and hopefully a lot of fans will come out and support us and I know the girls will be really excited to play. The soccer team says they wouldn't be anywhere without their fans. So as a special thank you, all sports pass holders get discounted tickets to tonight's game for $2 and since it's going to be chilly, BYU Athletics is giving out free hot chocolate. Taylor? So a great game, free hot chocolate, I'm in. Thanks, Sarah. And the soccer team sure didn't end conference play empty-handed. In addition to bringing home the WCC championship, BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood gets the WCC Coach of the Year award. Lindsay Lizenby Cutshall also grabbed WCC Player of the Year honors. And Conference Goalkeeper of the Year goes to BYU's first-year starter, Erica Owens. How they've been playing, they deserve oh, all yeah, of those awards. No question. And when Coop Tube returns, warm welcome. Find out what you can do to help the nation's top basketball recruit make up his mind. And shivering students, what the incoming cold front means for BYU athletes, tomorrow's game, and the fans. The final exhibition game against D2 powerhouse Finley gave BYU basketball one final tune-up before the season tips off tonight. It was all business from the get-go for the Cougars, and Brandon Davies started things off in style with the flush. He'd finish with 14, but sophomore sensation Tyler Hawes led all scorers with 19, including this body fake for the mid-range jumper. And the defense get in on the act, too, like this big swat from Brandon Davies. And the outside arsenal came courtesy of Craig Cusick, who hit four of BYU's nine buckets from beyond the arc. 11 Cougars saw playing time and all 11 scored as the BYU finished the preseason strong with a 90-61 win. And the men's and women's Cougar basketball teams are anxiously awaiting their regular season openers. The women are shooting around right now preparing for their 3 o'clock tip immediately following their game. The men will also jump at 7 o'clock 
Cougar Duper reporter Skylar Hardman is in the Marriott Center. Skylar, how are the basketball teams feeling about tonight's Sean, games? Sean, both BYU teams are confident heading into their games tonight, but for different reasons. The men are expecting some superior play out of their guards, and the women expect to pound the ball inside. During the preseason against Dixie State, the Lady Cougars did the opposite, and their three leading scorers were guards. Tonight, against the quick guard play of Weber State, head coach Jeff Judkins is looking to his front court. We should have advantage with our height and with, with our inside presence, so um, that'll probably be the key of the game. The guards are happy to have the bigs work inside all night while they lay wait, hoping for open jumpers. The women's backcourt may be expecting relief because of the team's advantage inside, but the men are facing one of the best bigs in the country as they host Tennessee State. Robert Covington averages 18 points and 8 rebounds. He's a great player. He's, he's going to be hard to, to get stopped, but you know we're confident in our team defense. While Davies deals with Covington inside, Tyler Hawes and the rest of the guards will worry about the game's tempo. We're going to run. We're going to try and play at our pace. and. Um, I think I like our chances when we're playing that way. Coach Rose and his men believe if they can do that, they'll be 1-0 at the end of the night. The Marriott Center sixth man might be a factor as well. For this unique doubleheader, any fans that get here early will get to choose their seats for the women's game and then hang on to that prime real estate for the men's. Forward Kehlani Unga remembers the last time she played as part of a doubleheader very fondly. He just feels so pumped to be there. Like, I just want everyone to experience how fun our games are. Both teams and the fans love the experience, but it stretches the Marriott Center resources thin. Justin Durfee says that one of the visiting teams has even moved into a makeshift locker room. It puts kind of a premium on space at the Marriott Center and then it puts a premium on time on game day because there are four teams instead of two teams. The women are excited to show a larger fan base than normal what they can do. So anytime that we can kind of piggyback off that and, and get more fans in the stadium to watch us play, um, we're confident that you know a lot of those people will probably like what they see. And if all of that isn't enticing enough, Unga and Steed may have special plans for tonight. Yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, dunking it, you know, maybe, throw it down. yeah, throw it down. So I think that would probably bring in some people. And uh, Haley says she was going to do something really crazy. The Marriott Center and BYU Athletic Marketing have been preparing for this doubleheader for weeks and are expecting a stellar turnout. In the Marriott Center, Skylar Hardman, Coop Tube. So Skylar, it doesn't look like anybody's there yet, but what time do you expect fans to start piling in? The doors open around 2 o'clock, so expect fans to start pouring in at that point. But it's going to be a very busy night for Cougar fans as the NCAA soccer tournament kicks off on South Field as well. Should be a pretty busy but fun night. Thanks, Skylar. It may not be Jimmer mania, but the national media are bullish on Brandon. They've named senior forward Brandon Davies to the preseason top 50 list for the John R. Wooden Award. The annual award goes to the most outstanding college men ba men's basketball players. Former Cougar Jimmer Ferdet and Danny Ainge won this award as seniors. And buckle up, Cougar fans, Jabari Parker is coming to town. And as CougTube Jake Edmonds tells us, you can help him enjoy his stay. Jake, what can we do so Jabari remembers BYU? Yeah, everyone in the country is raving over the Chicago native. And uh, now that he's making his way to Provo, Cougar fans can do two things, donate and show up. This was the scene at Duke University when Jabari Parker, the number one basketball recruit in the country, came to town. BYU joins Duke and three other major universities all tussling for the top spot on the Superstar. Tony Brown, a BYU fan from American Fork, is helping to unite Cougar fans by giving out t-shirts on game day when Parker visits the Marriott Center. Our goal is 5,000 shirts. The plan is to raise enough money to purchase t-shirts for the first several thousand fans who come to the Cougars November 24th game to support both BYU and Parker. It's been overwhelming actually. I think in about 36 hours we raised over $4,000. And these people aren't people we know. It's just literally a, a fan website where we pointed people to a donation page and you know it's been really exciting. I think that's a great idea. I think that's awesome, he'll be going to the game, and I really like that, having the fans come out and support him like that. Parker is a Chicago native, and although the shirts don't mention his name, or BYU's for that matter, the message is clear. 
So if you want to see Jabari Mania at BYU, come early to the November 24th matchup and support one of the most popular potential Cougars of all time. The original goal for this was $5,000, but when the donation line started blowing up, they changed their goal to 5,000 shirts. Now, not everyone is guaranteed a shirt, so make sure you show up at the Marriott Center a little bit early uh, when they take on Cal State Northridge. I want a shirt, but where did the shirts come from? Yeah, it's always great to have friends in high places. Uh, the owner of the company, it's called Sun Sports Apparel, um, actually is providing the t-shirts and paying for the printing on the shirts. So really, the, the total cost of these shirts is going to be uh, a little under $2 a shirt. It's all about the deal. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Yep. And when CoogTube comes back, cold weather Cougars. Find out how you can fight the frosty temperatures on game day. And bring your jackets and possibly your umbrellas to the game tonight. It's 11 game time weather. BYU women's volleyball will try to avenge one of its two losses this season when they take on Santa Clara tomorrow. But BYU proved they're a force at home against Loyola Marymount last week. BYU leads the nation in hitting percentage, but the Lions eliminated that advantage and kept the contest close. Alexa Gray had nine kills in the first set alone to give the Cougars an edge, and eight blocks from Jennifer Hampson made points hard to come by for LMU. An ace from Heather Hanneman concluded a set two thriller 28-26, and the Cougars pounced in the third, running away 25-13 and earning the three-zip sweep over LMU. Today, our Cougar track stars will lace up their shoes and race towards the NCAA Mountain Region Championship hosted by number two Colorado. With co-captain Rex Shields possibly out for minor injuries, our number seven men's cross country team will compete against top schools for just one of two bids for the shot to win the NCAA Championship next Saturday in Kentucky. And as we take a look outside, big change from last week. Over the week, we've had uh, sun, but obviously today more precipitation and lower temperatures. We're seeing rain and snow in the, around the Provo area. Currently, we're at 37 degrees, um, and throughout the day, we might increase uh, just a tad bit up to 41 degrees, but not too much. And then tonight, with all, the, with all this wind coming in at 17 miles per hour, uh, temperatures will drop all the way down to 30 degrees tonight. So for you soccer fans, uh, be prepared to have a chilly game. Uh, Tomorrow for the football game, during the day we'll have snow throughout the day, but then it should, it should clear up by 6 p.m. tomorrow, just in time for the game at 8 o'clock, so we shouldn't see snow at the game, and uh, just, some, just some clouds, uh, just a 20% chance of rain tomorrow night, um, so be sure to bring your jackets, your umbrellas, just in case, but it looks like we'll be able to, um, uh, we, we won't have any snow tomorrow, tomorrow night for the game. Uh, in southern Utah, uh, temperatures are looking a, a little bit different uh, with temperatures in the 60s today, in the 50s over the weekend, in the, 20, uh, the 30s uh, in the evening, and then tomorrow uh, all the way back up into the 60s. So temperatures are still looking nice there. No, they're not getting the, the precipitation that we're getting here, and so uh, they're able to enjoy the outdoors. In the north, we're at 40, 40 degrees today. Um, in the 30s over the weekend, and in the 20s, even down into the teens on over the weekend in the evening, and then uh, next week all the way up into the 50s. So the cold front, uh, it won't last too long, and we'll be able to see nicer temperatures beginning next week. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. Well, there you have it. Sounds like it's going to be a cold senior night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. CoogTube reporter Mary Blanchard has several survival tips for fans and players alike when the pig skin turns into a frozen ham. While cold weather doesn't change the fundamentals of football, there's no doubt that it does have an effect on the game. It hurts to hit. Like, I mean, like obviously, like anytime you're cold, you're gonna feel the hits a little bit more. But it's just hard to stay. It's hard to stay loose on the sideline. There are parkas, hand warmers, and heaters available for the players to use to keep warm. But that's only an option when they're on the sidelines. I mean, we try our best to huddle by the heater. I don't know if it does better or worse. I mean, we stand by the heater, and they're like, oh. You're in. And then we run away from the heater and it's freezing again. And just like a car, athletes need antifreeze to keep running in the cold. So the trainers supply them with a warm drink and it isn't hot chocolate. We found that using chicken broth that has a high salt content in it gives them the warmth that they need and replaces some electrolytes that they lose. I asked one of BYU's athletic trainers if he had any advice for those that are going to brave the cold. And he said to make sure that you wear a lot of layers and that you bring a friend that you don't mind sitting pretty close to. I'll definitely wear my Under Armour, probably, and I'll definitely have this sweatshirt on. I really enjoy the football games, and 
Just having like it really, really snowy adds like an extra level of excitement. Even fans at home are affected by the freezing temperatures. Announcers and cameramen have to find ways to keep warm too. BYU alum and current Green Bay Packers announcer Drew Smith knows this all too well. And in the breaks, I'll just take the hand warmers and put them over my face, breathe in and out of them so I get warm air in. <laughs> It's really a very, trying to be really creative in making sure. Sometimes you resort to running up and down the sidelines of the commercials just to get the body heat going. <laughs> exactly how you keep warm is up to you, but it's a cold, hard fact that you'll have to do something. In Provo, Mary Blanchard, KookTube. There may be a new record set tomorrow, but won't have anything to do with football. This game last season, BYU Food Services sold about 1,200 gallons of hot chocolate, and tomorrow's game is expected to be at least 10 degrees colder. And when Coup 2 comes back, Taylor's riding my coattails into a tie for first in predictions. Let's see if she'll stick with my picks again as we head to the Pac-12 territory for a showdown with Rose Bowl implications. All right, it might be cold outside, but it's about to get hot in here. It's our favorite part of the show, predictions. Sean is trying to lie to everyone that I, and throwing me under the bus, but please don't listen to him. But we are <laughs> tied for first with the reporters. We're 11 and 7. And Matt, you're just one game behind, so you can do this. You can do this. Okay. Um, this week, we're going to do BYU in the Idaho game on Saturday and Stanford versus Oregon State. So, Sean, let's start with you. I'm going to go BYU, of course, and then I'm going to take Oregon State over Stanford. Mm. Jake in the newsroom let's go to you uh, easily BYU over Idaho and then I'm actually gonna go with Stanford over Oregon State mm -hmm. all right Matt who do you got I'm gonna go with Sean BYU and Oregon State yeah. all right and for me I'm gonna go with BYU and I'm gonna go with Stanford against Oregon State you're picking something different yeah I know see we'll see who wins who yeah, comes out true. on top next to say, here we go but guys I think we can all um, really agree that BYU is probably going to beat Idaho. They are 120 out of 120 worst offense in the country. In fact, I'll yeah. make an ultimatum. If BYU does not win by more than 35 points, we'll count this as a loss for me. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And there's yes, no way son, they I don't. There's no way they don't win by that many points. Losing their coach uh, a couple weeks ago, losing their quarterback recently, yeah. Uh, yeah. they got nobody. On are offense. they going to score a first down? Even are they going to get to a first down? That's what I want to know. We'll see. Uh, I, I, think I, I think they'll get a few. But they not why not? All right, and Stanford and um, Oregon State. Guys, Stanford at home, I mean, they're very evenly matched teams, so anyone can win, really, yeah, I no. think. It's true, and the biggest thing that I look at is you look at Oregon State's pass offense, they're 21st in the nation, and then you take Stanford's pass defense, they're number 98 in the nation. Mm -hmm. So I think Oregon State's going to win it through the air and Another, just rack yeah, up that so. way. Yeah, Matt, what about you? No, I, yeah, I agree with Sean. I think Oregon State, I think they have they, they have something to, to prove in this game, and I think they're going to be able to come out on top. Yeah, the, the big question lost. out of this whole thing, though, guys, is is why are we even talking about this? These guys are battling for second place in the Pac-12 <laughs> North. It really doesn't that is matter. True. <laughs> but they could get a Rose Bowl. If Oregon goes to the championship, then they be nice. could be Rose Bowl bound. Yeah, yeah, depending on what USC does. Yeah, no, it will all depend. I guess yeah. we'll just see, have, to ha have to see what happens on the gridiron. <laughs> and that's Kook Tube for Friday, November 9th, 2012. If you want another look at the stories we did today or share with your friends, check out our KubeTube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us.